This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Hindu. Hello and welcome to News Tonight with me, Ramanathan. 30 minutes of news coming your way. But before that, the headlines tonight. Two more teams for the next edition of IPL. Sahara wins the bid for the Pune team while Rendezvous Sports gets Kochi. Sahara Adventure Sports Private Limited have chosen the city of Pune. The city of Kochi is the qualified city for the next franchise and Rendezvous is the winner. There are also intangible benefits associated with it. Kerala is a huge market. Sources say the unclaimed packet on the Kingfisher flight from Bangalore to Trivandrum could be a crude bomb as traces of gunpowder are found in it. Congress party prepares for the future, says it will give preference to youngsters. Bloggers get socially conscious in the real space and right here in the blocking capital of India. These are the real world feelings and you know, and, and, it, and it makes a lot of sense for them to actually, uh, uh, to actually blog and blog more. It's the battle of the kings at Chepok, a battle between Chennai Super Kings and Kings 11 Punjab. Well, the big news of the day, the next edition of the Indian Premier League will be a perfect 10. Chairman Lalit Modi today announced the new IPL teams for the next season. The teams from Pune and Kochi are all set to make IPL bigger in its fourth edition. But the good news for IPL, it's now rich by a staggering 3,000 crore rupees. All of you have said that there is a recession going on. I don't think there's any recession going on as far as the IPL is concerned. The IPL is on an upswing and continues to be on upswing. Lalit Modi is a happy man. And why not? The franchisees of the two teams from Pune and Kochi come along with over 3,000 crores for the IPL. The Sahara Group has backed the Pune team for $370 million, which roughly translates to 1,700 crore rupees. The other franchisee, Randevu Sports World Consortium, will own the team from Kochi at a cost of $333 million, roughly 1,500 crore rupees. The cost of both the teams put together almost touches the total value of the first eight IPL teams. But the investors aren't complaining. They are sure the profits will come in. So there are several factors which will help us. Because there are, it is only not only tangible benefits, there are also intangible benefits. We feel uh, Kerala is a huge market, uh, cricket, uh, you know, IPL is a great franchisee to bring to Kerala and you know, we are very confident that we will do well in Kerala. The stars from these states are not complaining either. Given an opportunity, they would love to represent the state they are from. Uh, you know, if given an opportunity to lead a side or even to be a part of the Kerala team, I think uh, I am sure any cricketer, if you ask, do you want to play for your own state, they will surely with uh, arms down, I will say, I would love to run in for Kerala Kochin. With two more teams, the fourth edition of IPL promises more fireworks for viewers and hopefully business for the new franchisees too. With Sam Daniel, Ramanathan for NDTV Hindu. Meanwhile, Shashi Tharoor, who's been tweeting his interest in a Kerala-centric cricket team, explained that he wasn't going to take an active role in the Kochi side, but that was he was excited about what it would mean for the youth of Kerala and that he did his part in encouraging people to bid for the side. He's said to have had an active role in facilitating the deal to bring an IPL team to Kerala. Cricket is beginning to become popular in Kerala and I think that the onset of an IPL team here will be very good for Kerala because it will capture that spirit of enthusiasm of the young. It will give young Keralites a team to identify with. It will give them the passion of a sport which has worldwide recognition and certainly national significance. And I think all the associated activities of the IPL will certainly give Kerala a, a, a sort of, um, shall we say, a dynamism and energy that I'm sure will inspire people. NETV senior correspondent Sam Daniel caught up with Srishant after the auction process was over. Srishant clearly excited and more than willing to be a part of the Kochi team in the next edition of the IPL. Cochin has got its own IPL team and joining me now is Srishant, someone who's from Cochin. Your first reactions that Cochin has a, an IPL team of its own now. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a great a great feeling and as I said, uh, thanks to everybody uh, you know, who supported it, especially Lalitsa for making it a reality. I mean, it was in his hands and uh, 
thanks to Shashi sir for supporting the team and uh, even the franchise I think uh, the franchises and the team owners who's uh, taken the step forward and getting the IPL team it's a great thing because I have been playing uh, in international cricket for the last five years and I know how it feels to be a cricketer and professional cricketer so I'm sure it's a great opportunity for the youngsters of Kerala and not only youngsters but even people who missed out on playing the Indy Trophy who are really good at one day side and T20 matches I'm sure it's just four overs come in and you know, 24 balls, you might even score 50 and be world famous, not just right. Kerala famous or Indian famous. So I think it's a great, great step taken by the uh, board. And you're from Kings Level Punjab, but do you think you would love to switch to the new coaching team and be a captain yourself? Oh, I don't know about that, but I love Kings Level Punjab. As I say, um, uh, this is the first franchise. Thanks to Preeti and all the honours of our Ras in Anas and everybody because they're the one who actually took my name uh, in the first IPL auction. I'm, I'll, be all, I'll be always... Uh, are thankful and uh, you know I owe to, I owe to them for sure. But uh, as I always say, you know your heart beats. It's like in in Malayalam there is a say where Bharatam um, and the Periketa. It's just like when you hear your state's name, your blood boils more. So if if given an opportunity, I mean that is in the future. I mean you know three years contract gets over right. and then everyone is in the beat. So it all depends on how the franchise look up to. I mean I would love to play for Punjab for sure. But uh, you know if given an opportunity to lead a side or even to be a part of the Kerala team, I think uh, I am sure any cricketer, if you ask, do you want to play for your own state, they will surely with uh, arms down, I will say, I would love to run in for care, Cochin, uh, not the Cochin fighters or whatever, but right now, I think I am very happy with the Punjab team. Lastly, Cochin doesn't have a BCCI stadium actually, uh, but what does this mean to Kerala itself, Kerala themselves? Uh, nothing much, I mean, uh, we, have, we have stadium, but it's just that uh, we have stadiums in different different uh, parts of, but we don't have a proper proper stadium. So we just got the permission, and I think the work is already started. And I'm sure um, by the time 2012 uh, uh, starting it should be ready. But for the 2011 season, I'm sure uh, if the Greater Cochin Development Authority gives a permission for the, you know, we have asked for five years of lease or something. So if we get the stadium for a couple of years, it will be great because uh, the capacity over there is like 110,000 people watching you, and uh, the stadium is really noisy. And uh, it's a bit of humidity and all that, but I think it's a great challenge. IPL is 20 overs, and I think people will love it in Cochin, on the other side, because Malayalis, I mean, we were just waiting for this. We were just waiting for this opportunity where we could show the world, I mean, right. what we're capable of. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity. So, uh, infrastructure wise, I'm, you will be amazed. I mean, right now I'm standing in Chennai, just getting ready for the IPL match uh, against Chen Chennai for Punjab. And in couple, uh, you know, you will be sooner or later, you will realize the infrastructure and the Everything goes really fast. I mean, the moment today is the team announced, and uh, you know, straight away uh, right. there is so much of thing happening already. So right. I'm sure the owners and the franchisee will take care of itself, and I'm sure uh, by the time the IPL starts, we'll have a proper infrastructure and facilities right. available. Thank you so much for talking to us, Thank you. Thank you. In Chennai with camera person Sukumar, Sam Daniel, Find the TV. Well, Cochin Fighters, that's what Shishant has suggested for the team from Cochin. I hope Randeo Sports is listening. Now, moving on over to the other top story we have been tracking. An unclaimed suspicious packet was found in a Kingfisher flight which was flying from Bangalore to Trivandrum. The packet was noticed after the passengers got off the plane and it was removed and moved to a cooling isolation pit. Sources say traces of gunpowder and a bell-shaped object were found in the packet. It was diffused and sources believe that it could have been a crude bomb. The matter has been handed over to security agencies and an investigation is on. NETV senior editor Maya Sharma from Bangalore gave her inputs. There were security concerns at two South Indian airports on Sunday morning. Now, this was after a package containing a small amount of explosives was actually found on a Kingfisher Airlines flight that had travelled from here in Bangalore to Thiruvananthapuram. And at Tiruvananthapuram, while the airline staff were actually cleaning out the aircraft doing the routine security checks, a small amount of explosives was actually found wrapped up in a Malayalam newspaper dated January. Now, of course, questions were raised. How did that material get on the aircraft? Here in Bangalore, here in Bangalore Airport, the authorities are saying that they are in no way responsible. They are putting the blame totally on Kingfisher Airlines. The Bangalore Airport authorities are essentially saying that they check the material that is loaded from the airport onto the aircraft. That is both check-in baggage and hand baggage as well. And they say the checks were clear and that the material might have been already on the aircraft, in which case it is the responsibility of Kingfisher Airlines. Now, Kingfisher Airlines does acknowledge the discovery of that material. Investigations are on, both by the airlines, both by the authorities here, and also by police to try and find out what actually happened. Of course, after the recent security scare, is through a mysterious shooting episode here on the outskirts of Bangalore certainly a lot of concern 
of the security arrangements at high-profile installations in the country. With G. Lokesh, Maya Sharma at the airport in Bangalore for NDTV. Well, back home in Chennai, the Defence Intelligence Agency has now stepped into the case of the suspicious parcel which was seized by Chennai's customs officers on Thursday. The contents of the parcel are highly secretive and the recipient of the parcel, an ex-army man, is in trouble. Investigating officers say they can neither accept nor deny that the case could be terror-related. The Defence Intelligence Agency will now probe the suspicious parcel case. On Thursday, the Customs Department seized a packet meant for 77-year-old Adrian Marley, a retired Army officer now based in California. The contents of the parcel, packed in five steel boxes, sent a shock down the spine of the authorities. During a routine examination, Customs officials stumbled upon five boxes containing project documents, including blueprints of the Naval Dry Dock at Vishagapatnam, an airport academy project at Hyderabad, apart from maps and drawings of Meerut and Muzaffarpur. Sources say the recipient Adrian Marley, who travelled to the United States last month, is certain to be booked under the Official Secret Act, because no officer can keep any official documents with him after retirement. But his bigger crime is that he kept the most sensitive of information. So why was he taking the blueprints to America? The blueprints are so detailed that it describes even the architecture of each of these highly important defence-related structures. According to sources, one Adrian Marley in California now helps in building engineering. So why is this special interest in the defense-related buildings in India? Marley has apparently told investigators that the contents of the parcel are his personal belongings. But with the Defense Intelligence Agency, which combines intelligence network of all three armed forces probing the case now, it seems Marley would have to do more explaining. In Chennai, Salim for NDTV Hindu. Now the by-election to the Penagram constituency is all set to take place on March 27th and despite videos and allegations of large-scale mall practices during campaign trail in Penagram, the real campaigning it seems is yet to begin. CMM Karunanadi is expected to campaign in Penagram on the 24th, whereas his arch-rival and AIADMK Supremo J. J. Lalita will be fielding for her candidate Unbargan tomorrow and the day after. Stalin is also expected to campaign in Penagram on Tuesday. PMK founder Ram Das and his son Anubamri Ram Das were the early birds who campaigned much before the other political heavyweights from Chennai arrived. Now, still ahead, we will get you a senior journalist addressing a fundamental question on Indo-Pak politics. More on that on the other side.